It's very easy to spot where will disruption happen. Just look for inefficiency and you will see it. So one example, I flew here from Stockholm, flying back here 100 years ago. That was new technology. Everybody was shaking their heads. The Wright brothers were experimenting and everybody kind of knew those guys will die because, as you know, steel can't fly. Steel can't fly, steel can't fly, steel can't fly. Wow, did you read the news today? Steel can freaking fly. New technology. And you have the early adopters or the you know, people with leather hats and goggles. So, wow, we are on our horses watching them flying. And then after a while, everybody flies and it starts growing exponentially and the horses go like this. You know. This is what I refer to as the ROI of the 21st century. Risk of ignorance. The risk of ignorance is deadly. You can actually measure it today. Currently, 70% of the companies on the Fortune 1000 list dropped out in a 10-year period. So that means that no matter what we think about the future, we know that statistically, 30% might make it another decade. So that means leadership doesn't need to, to live a decade. And that's the big challenge, of course. Also the big opportunity. But again, remember, when we talk about disruption, you don't die because you're bad. When you hear examples like Kodak, everybody talking about these examples. Kodak did not go out of business. They didn't go to a Chapter 11 bankruptcy because they were bad. They lost because they were the best, doing something no one in this room needs anymore. When we talk about, we don't no longer need middlemen, and I think for business this might be really important. And when I talk about this, I think about the shadows from Lehman, uh, the collapse of Lehman Brothers. If you say that trust is gone, and we kind of open up for new ideas with blockchain and bitcoins. To be honest, bitcoins have been kind of strange fruit. Maybe these, all of these very well-educated people know what it is, but for the rest of us, it's a bit like far away. So when we talk about blockchain and bitcoin, is it really music of a very far distant future? Or is it here right now? Well, both. It's, it's here as far as in growth goes. So, I mean, if you stop, because most people, I would say, when they think about things like Bitcoin, they, they focus on what's the value if I exchange that to a US dollar or a euro or a Danish crown or whatever. And that's, I mean, that's like one of the least interesting things. They, Bitcoin is so much more than a currency. It's a trust network, a decentralized trust network. Um, and what that means is that, well, since I don't trust you and you don't trust me, if we want to do business, we use a middleman like MasterCard. Mm -hmm. That's how the world goes. And if we want to do business with someone in Tanzania, it gets even harder because we can't even meet or see each other and we definitely don't trust each other, you know. So then we need to have like a serious remittance network or something going and it will cost us a lot of inefficiency. Again, disruption will happen where we have inefficiency. So this bank that I go to to send money to Tanzania, they will pretend that it actually takes four days to send an email to Tanzania. And I will try to, you know, accept that it, yeah, sure it does. <laughs> like if I would send an email to someone in the US and say, you expect it next Sunday because I've just sent, you know, it's just ridiculous, it's inefficient. And also the way they charge doing it. That's not the point. The point is that all the people in Tanzania, for example, doesn't even have a bank account. So when they start to realize that, well, first of all, they need connectivity. Half of the Earth's population are still not online uh, like we are. So when they have connectivity and a cheap smartphone, 10 euro smartphone or something, then they can become a bank and they can start to trade without asking anyone for permission, without needing any middleman. So we will not start this trend here. It will grow slow because here it's only for tech nerds because you and I, we will want our frequent flyer miles so we will still use our MasterCard, you know. <laughs> but they will start to realize, you know, when they go and stand in line outside of Western Union to wire transfer money back home to their parents and Western Union charges them 9% for the favor, you know, they will understand when someone they trust. And this will, this will open completely new uh, possibilities because I'm thinking why I mentioned up Lehman Brothers is I know that the blockchain technology, which apparently was an anonymous inventor, uh, came to life after Lehman Brothers because the collapse 
and the lack of trust. But if what you say is, is true, and that means in the future we might have a society where we don't need financial institutions or banks, what kind of let's say, disruption, will that actually... Well, you see, along? already, it's like, because you're right, every time we had a, a big problem, a big lack of trust, then we had a spike in, in the use of Bitcoin. So last uh, six months, um, I mean, if you bought one Bitcoin a year ago, it would cost you a couple, two, three hundred dollars. Today, it's like twelve hundred dollars. That's because a lot of people in India, for instance, don't trust the value of the state currency because the prime minister used, uh, made uh, some bills, some paper bills, illegal, because he wanted to have them you know, come on, uh, come on to tax fraud. And you see the same thing happening in China, in Venezuela, and a lot of places today, that the young generation, they don't buy gold when they lack trust. They, they go into cryptocurrency. So uh, yeah, it will definitely pose um, a, a real challenge to the financial institutions, again, because they are creating a system that is not working very well for a lot of people. It's very inefficient.